welcome to the Artist Behind the Music Canadian series. Today we have Cassie De Silva joining us. We're going to chat about all sorts of fun things, her new music that's out now and all sorts of great stuff. So welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Yes, I love the backdrop you've got going on. It's celebrating your new release. Yes, this is actually the sign I had in my video and it's in the artwork and it took a million hours. So I'm using it to its full life <laughs> until it's falling apart. <laughs> I think that's perfect. It'll be your whole, your whole run of promo. <laughs> exactly. It's good brand. My mom was going to throw it away after the video and I'm like, no, do you know how many hours I spent on that? I'm going to use it again. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. Well, you know, we got to get creative and and use our creative talents in all ways. So I'm assuming you made it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm pretty crafty. Yeah. Um, especially when I'm on a budget. So <laughs> I did a lot of DIY crafts for the video. I actually did all the prop design myself. So um, it was a lot of hours, a lot of glue, a lot of tissue paper. These are all like little tissue flowers that are like individually like folded and glue. Yeah, I put, I put a lot of people to work. <laughs> but you should make a TikTok tutorial if you haven't already on how to make that. That is my plan. I actually did a lot of like time lapses when I made a bunch of props. There's actually a huge heart pinata in the video too that I made by hand. Um, I did like a time lapse of that. So I'm going to post a bunch of that stuff. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I love watching stuff like that. The behind the scenes process stuff. Yeah, in hindsight, like maybe I would have spent the $80 on the pinata off Amazon because it took so long, but we learned how to do it. We did it. It's been done. And Don't now need you to know. Do it. <laughs> yeah. If you ever need to make another one, maybe it'll take half the time. <laughs> yeah. Live and learn, right? That's what life's about. Oh, that's awesome. Truly. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about what got you started as a songwriter, as a musician, as a performing recording artist. What were kind of the the inspirations and the journey that that led you here? Um, as a songwriter, I mean, I was writing poems from a really young age just to kind of get my thoughts out in my fuzzy pink notebook that I had as a kid, mostly about like, you know, boys not liking me back or my parents divorcing, whatever. And then eventually it evolved into like, you know, more high school problems, like boys not wanting to date me. <laughs> And then, you know, there are a lot of boys involved in the writing. Um, I played piano from a young age and I was a really shy kid, but I kind of just started out playing talent shows because my sister wouldn't let me dance with her in the talent show. So I sang and played the piano and yeah, I just kind of went from there. Then I did open mics and coffee houses and then graduated to real shows and just kind of slowly snowballed. Yeah, <laughs> slowly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's definitely always a step-by-step a -step process. So you said you were, mm -hmm. you were shy or introverted. Do you feel like being a performer as a quieter, do you still feel like you're a shy or introverted individual? No, you feel like I mean, I'm like definitely, I kind of take on what's around me. So I can be, I can be quiet if, if the moment allows. And I definitely like my alone time, but I thrive off the energy of people too. So it's kind of, it's a funny balance. As a kid though, like I was beyond shy. Like my report cards say like, she does not speak. <laughs> like it's pretty crazy. So my elementary teachers are like, wow, this is a little bit nuts that you're, you've chosen this path. Yeah. Um, not quite adding up. But yeah, now, I mean, I'm kind of an open book at this point. So do you not too that, shy anymore. Do you think performing in music helped you kind of overcome that, that barrier of being shy and quiet to... More. I think definitely yeah. I think it helped me be more open like I still I still kind of face you know when you go to like they're not happening right now but when you go to like industry events and stuff I still have that like oh my gosh anxiety when I walk in a room yeah. but um and that's a hard thing for me I think it's actually like more intimate conversations are more difficult for me but like performing in front of a big crowd seems to be much easier um because there's like a little bit of like anonymity involved whereas like when you're in a small setting which is kind of how I started out I started in folk music and was doing like house concerts and really small shows and that I think was such a good exercise for me in overcoming that shyness because you were like pretty much face to face with the people in the room telling them about these songs so yeah. I think that helped for sure for sure I find it interesting even kids that take music lessons um, I find a lot of children are introverted in music. 
and it's neat to kind of watch the how music can help shape individuals yeah I think kind of I think a lot of people are introverts in music because you kind of start out as not knowing how to ex like you're kind of sitting in your room like messing around with your own thoughts and ideas and um I think you need that side to like really hone in on like your skills and also yeah. your ideas so I think that's not too coincidental <laughs> I think that's very common I think so too because I was definitely a shy kid I mean I would put on a fake voice anytime I tried to sing like <laughs> age before 16 I was like just a very quiet person and now I just could talk anyone's ear off all the time so it's, uh, well, that's good. <laughs> it's interesting, you know just the evolution on how and I think for me music as well helped kind of break that barrier of, of fear so let's talk yeah. about fear how do you push through like the nervous moments or any fear that kind of comes into your way for a barrier what kind of tools do you like to use to knock it down uh I don't know if I figured that out yet I think I still like have massive anxiety before I step out on a stage or even do something like this and then once you're doing it it's like oh I could do this forever it's just like getting on or like singing that first note it's just getting over that I'm still trying to figure it out I'm sure it'll come with time but yeah. you know <laughs> Yeah, it's a comfortability it's, thing. Absolutely. And it's interesting how you say like prior leading up to something, how the anxiety is high or the stress levels are high, but once you're doing it and present, all of a sudden mm -hmm. all that fear and stuff just dis disappears and you get back into that, the love of why you do what you do. And I think focusing yeah. on that is something that, that always helps. And something else I always like to share too, is just seeing that fear and that stress is a light switch. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I can, I'm doing this because I love it. And anxiety and excitement give you the same physical reaction. And I'll yeah. just never forget this moment where it was like, oh, I'm nervous, but this is how I feel physically when I'm excited. So what if I just switch in my mind, my mindset, that anxiety to excitement, I'll still feel the same, but my mental mindset will be a lot calmer. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a very good thought. I should really put that into practice. <laughs> I think for me, it's like adrenaline kicks in. I'm like, I can do this. I can do anything. Adrenaline is definitely a superpower, I think, in this industry. Mm -hmm. And then like after the show, you're like ready to go for like hours. It's like, why does no one want to hang out with me? We need to, like, we need to be doing stuff right now. Yeah. Exactly. And then, oh, I hear you on that. And how do you find that adrenaline doing like live stream shows or, you know, interviews online? Because I feel like it's just such a different energy back when we were playing live shows, you'd get off the mm -hmm. stage and you'd have all that, let's go rah, rah, rah. Uh, for me, sometimes I just like take all that energy and, and go right to bed, but <laughs> but I that just like that pent up stuff. And then now we have all that energy and we're in our home space. So how do you find that being a difference? It's so weird because um, I love audience interaction when I play a show. Like I love kind of feeding off, okay, people are laughing at what I said or like you know it, I really try I really read the room and I love talking about my songs and and everything has a funny story to it so it's super rewarding for me to get those laughs and stuff but yeah it's weird being on the live streams and then like okay what's every, what's everyone saying are we liking this like that is such a weird shift um I'm sure for everyone but um it's it's cool to be able to still engage from home and still connect with people. It's just, it's, I'm definitely missing that other side of it. Yeah, I know. It's definitely a different, a different experience. Um, mm -hmm. But it's great that we have the technology to be able to do things like this. Yes. Thank goodness. In so many I think I'd go crazy not seeing people online. <laughs> I hear ya. I hear you loud and clear. So 2020 was obviously a crazy year for everybody. What were some things that you pulled from the year, positive things that you found? Or, you know, some positive things? Game. Yeah. Some things that were good. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I actually didn't realize how much I struggled with being isolated from people, especially my friends and family, because I really value spending time with my friends and family. So that's been the hardest thing for me. It's been a really good time to kind of like look inward and especially with making this new project, um, not really be affected by outside influences. I just really 
had myself to go to. Um, so that was good. And I, I think I just learned, yeah, I think I learned a lot about my own judgment and also just about like how important it is when we do get to spend time with our friends and family like I'm just gonna be so excited when I finally can hang out with all my friends again I, know. Uh, I miss it so much yeah so I mean if anything that's been the hardest but also like most teachable thing is just like how important those relationships are yeah. for sure yeah absolutely absolutely um, so last year, you spent a lot of time writing this project, working on putting it together. Let's talk a little bit about the inspiration behind the songs and kind of what inspired you to, to move a new project forward. Yeah, so last all through last year, actually, I was finished recording. So it was really just getting all the visual pieces together and just like finishing up the production and mix and master and all that stuff. So it had already been written, um, like some of these songs have been written for a couple of years now, so I'm super eager to get them out. Um, I think I was like closing a lot of doors in terms of like past relationships. And I really wanted to be super honest in these songs, um, like uncomfortably so. <laughs> so uh, that was the focus in writing all these songs and kind of putting together the selection that I chose for this EP. Um, yeah, just honesty and relationships. Um, whether it be old ones or new ones um, yeah it just is like a blend of like breaking up and falling in love again and like relationship woes you know yeah all relationshipy <laughs> all relationshipy <laughs> the common theme right mm -hmm. I think that's something that everybody can relate to on some on some level too just a relationship can be so many different things and songs about love can be you know heartbreak love happy love struggle whatever and yeah by those same feelings to friendships to family to any relationships that we really experience so that's yeah the cool thing about music is people can interpret things how they want do you have a exactly. favorite favorite song from the group oh uh, they're all my babies <laughs> um I'm not sure I I think there's there's been so many special moments about each especially for me because a lot of them are like really cathartic to write like I wrote a song that's on the CP called We Might Break Up that's actually about my relationship with my boyfriend. Um, and, you know, it was fun to kind of like be like, look, I wrote this when I was like not in a good place and we laughed about it. And it's just a way for me to get that out. Um, I think because it's so honest, that one really resonates for me. And of course, like this first song, Unsolicited Contact, I'm so excited about because it's such a shift from my older songs and the vibe and yeah just like you know kind of a grown-up version now where I am yeah. um yeah so they're all really special to me <laughs> but those <laughs> ones stick out that's awesome and it's and you know you said a grown-up kind of version of who you are and and that's what's so great about music too is that it's constantly evolving our sounds are always changing and shifting as to where we are in life currently mm -hmm. so it's always fun to kind of look back on things that you've created in the past and where you are today and moving forward it's fun and like mortifying too and mortifying. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. you're like what was like I going through the demo folder is scary it's really <laughs> scary sometimes what was I thinking yeah but that's that's all about the creative process right I think we have mm -hmm. to the, the crazy stuff out there to get to the really good stuff and to really find our authentic sound whatever that whatever that sounds like or looks like definitely for me it's been like years and years and it's still changing and <laughs> morphing every time I write something so yeah I think yeah it's okay I think as a creative mm -hmm. uh, you're always exploring different avenues it's necessary no one wants to hear the same song twice so <laughs> who are some of your biggest influences um obviously Taylor Swift when I was young I was she was kind of the first person who really like piqued my interest in songwriting just because of how honest she was in her writing and yeah. my friends and I would like scream her songs in my bedroom um yeah she's definitely a big one I I love like great storytellers like Casey Musgraves I just love her writing um and some newer artists like Alec Benjamin I love his storytelling and his writing so I think he was a bit of an influence too um with just how I thought of writing and how honest I could be and how specific I could get with my writing. Um, 
obviously the Taylor Swift is the holy grail. <laughs> <laughs> she's awesome. And she's a prime example of how sounds evolve and shift and yeah. change. And, you know, she's done everything, every kind of sound out there, really. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it's, it's so I love, cool. I love that she does that. And it's inspiring for artists to know that they can change and shift and do different mm-hmm. things, right? Yeah. My friends and I are big Taylor Swift stands, so. <laughs> Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you, girl. <laughs> awesome. Well, on that note, I would love to hear some tunes if you're ready. Great. Get over here. <laughs> Pull up your chair. Do you have a special guest joining us today? Yes. Hello. Hi. <laughs> this is Cole. Welcome to the show, Cole. <laughs> I pay him in like eye rolls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's true love. Okay. I love it. Um, we're going to first start with Still in Love, which was the last single I put out um, way back in 2019. So it's been a while to put something out. That's why it's so exciting now. But yeah, here we go. I believe in talking, something's on my mind. Yeah, it seems like lately is where you're spending your time. I've been trying to fight it to rearrange my heart. All I want is silence, but I can't tell you why. These feelings won't add up, no, not even for a minute. I'm still in love, I'm still in love. Nothing left to say, so I guess I should admit it. I'm still in love, and I'm still. tune and you've got such a cool tone to your voice thank you yeah it's very unique and original and it's just I love hearing voices that really stand apart and yours is definitely one of those thanks so much yeah 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 for sure how do you find being more of a pop artist in the Canadian music scene what do you feel you know in comparison to singing more like the folky country music that's so more typical I guess in live settings yeah yeah, what what are your thoughts kind of on the pop industry? Well, I I kind of fell into pop because I mean, I got signed before as like a folk pop artist. Yeah. Um and then at the same time I had started writing like EDM top lines and I loved it. 
and was listening to so much more pop music. Like I had been kind of too cool before and then <laughs> was listening to a lot of pop music and got really obsessed with like Astrid S and Seagrid and like all these cool pop artists. And so I think my music just went there like around the same time I got signed. I was like, hold up, hold up. I want to do this actually. Um, and they were cool and let me do it. And yeah, I just, I just wanted to make fun music that I wanted to like blare in the car with my friends. Like that's always been the stuff I've, really had had a lot of fun with so that's where I decided to go it just it just kind of happened um <laughs> yeah no it's awesome I, I love that you you kind of put a break on and was like hold up that's not what I want to do <laughs> this is what I want to do and, and what would yeah. a lot of people are like okay well this is what people expect of me and we'll keep mm -hmm. on that track and I, I just think that's awesome you know yeah it's been cool it's it's funny because my hometown's really folk music oriented. We have like a big folk festival every year. So like still when I play shows here, it tends to lean a bit that way. Like I play the more songwriter -y stuff. So it's cool to still kind of do both in a sense. And I try not to limit my writing. Like sometimes it just comes out folkier or more songwriter -y and that's fine. Um, it's, it's sometimes changes in the production, but yeah, it's just try to just let it happen however it does. <laughs> I think it's as an artist really important to remember just allow the songs to speak for themselves and go mm -hmm. on the journey that they need to go on and you know you can pick and choose what you put out to the world and what you play at different different shows and everything has a little yeah. different marketability so exactly yeah Very cool cool let's fun hear, yeah let's hear the next song you have for us all right this is my new single just out um called unsolicited contact <clears throat> A little different too. <laughs> All right. Text me on my birthday not to wish me happy birthday, just to tell me about the other girl that you're in love with now. Yeah, I think her name is Megan. Well, I know her name is Megan because your mom posted that photo. I'll pretend I just found out. You're sorry for the heavy text, but what the hell did you forget? We haven't talked since back in May, back when your uncle passed away. You want to make me jealous? Sorry, I'm not overzealous. I'm just blowing up my candle. I 
stripped down like that. It's so cool. Yeah, it's different, eh? Yeah, I know. I love how it just it gives you this like, I want to listen to everything she's saying kind of vibe. <laughs> Very there's a lot of words <laughs> yeah and it's funny because on your instagram you had a post about i guess you have an android or something like that i saw a while back <laughs> and oh, when, i guess you got an android yeah that, that's all coming together <laughs> it's all coming together yeah i've been trying to pepper in little easter eggs here and there so <laughs> oh it's working that's awesome so good thanks so excited about what 2021 is going to bring for your new music thank that's you amazing. so much I love the backdrop again and just everything pink and fun. It's like right up my alley. <laughs> Yay! Yes, we love pink and sparkly things. <laughs> <laughs> the best. Everything. Especially <laughs> him. He loves it. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I always like to wrap these episodes up with the question if you had one message to share with the world, what would it be? Oh my gosh. <laughs> A loaded question. <laughs> that is so hard. <laughs> um, listen to my song and No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I think maybe, uh, especially given this year, is just to like, you know, really appreciate everyone while we have them around and appreciate your friends and family or whoever is important to you. Um, yeah, that's been my biggest lesson this past year, I think. So, and also listen to unsolicited contact, please. <laughs> yeah, the world. <laughs> too. I love it. Appreciate everyone you have. And while you're all appreciating each other, load up your Spotify or Apple Music. And yes. Hit play. Yeah, when you can finally get together, yeah. just like, just really, really hit that play button, you know? And then yeah. hit repeat. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I'm all about it. I'll be doing that for you. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> You bet. Well, thanks so much, Cassie, for joining me on the artist. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Crystal. You bet. Awesome. I can't wait to chat again soon. Let's do.